in today's video, we're going to take a look at a short introduction to semaphores and uh, what do they actually do. So here I have a simple program, as we've seen this program time and time again in this uh, series, where I'm just creating a, a few threads, namely four, using this routine that they are calling, and then I'm also going to be joining them in here. Now, uh, first things first, we're going to go over how to use a semaphore, and then I'm going to take a look at how exactly it works. So to use it, what we have to do is first include here the semaphore.h header, and in here we're going to define a sem underscore t type uh, variable, called, let's call it just semaphore. But usually, if you're using semaphores, you should call them something more specific. Here's just a simple example. Now, to initialize this uh, semaphore, what we have to call is called semInit. And this guy takes in the reference to our semaphore variable that we've defined up top, like so. And then takes in a second parameter that tells the semaphore whether we are using multiple processes, really. So if you have only multiple threads, then you should pass in here zero. If you have multiple uh, processes that have multiple threads that use this semaphore, then you should pass in here one. Uh, here we're gonna pass in zero because we're only having this main process and uh, no other one. So we can just pass in here, simple enough. And then the third parameter is the initial value of the semaphore. We're gonna see exactly what that value is all about. I'm gonna pass in here just one, okay? Important thing to note here is that semaphores do actually have an, an integer, a value that is stored uh, in their uh, structure. Next up, we're going to have to destroy the, sem the semaphore. So I'm going to call here sem destroy, just like most other uh, objects in uh, the pthread and similar libraries. So here we can call in again semaphore, and that just takes in the address to that semaphore that we want to destroy, and that's it. This tells the library that we're done with the semaphore, we don't need to use it, we can free some resources. So, so far so good. Now there are two operations that you can do on a semaphore inside a thread. Namely, you can wait and post. And a wait is very similar to a lock on a mutex, and a post is very similar to an unlock on a mutex. But we'll see exactly the differences once we get to the program itself. What I'm gonna do here is simply gonna say, uh, let's say I just want to print a message, so print f hello from thread, let's say percent %d and uh, backslash n. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna give it here the, as argument, I'm gonna give it the ID. So I'm gonna have here this args be passed um, its ID inside pthread create. So I'm gonna have int pointer a equals malloc of size of int. And then at the address of a save i, and I'm passing here as a fourth parameter, as we've learned before, to our routine here. Then we're gonna have the i value inside our args, then we can actually dereference it. So I'm gonna say yeah, int pointer args, like that, and of course, free that memory. So right now we're not using in any way, shape or form semaphores, right? If I try to launch this, like so, we're simply gonna get four hellos from one from each thread. So that's to be expected. Now, uh, let's say that we do something else, like behind the scenes that takes in a long time. So we're gonna just slip off one second in, in this place. We're gonna have to implement anything here. And if I try to launch this, again, we're gonna just see four hellos at the same time printed on the screen, just with one second delay. So nothing really special here. But what if we, before slipping, what if we wait on that semaphore? What if we do sem wait on this semaphore? And then once we're done printing, we do sem post on this semaphore. Okay, let's see, let's see what happens. If I try to launch this, you will notice that now every hello comes at a uh, distance in time of one second, right? So only one thread can execute this part of code at a time. It acts kind of like a mutex, if you uh, if you noticed. So it is a very interesting behavior. Now let's take a look at exactly what happens with this semaphore behind the scenes and how these all wait and post actually works. First things first, there are a couple of rules to these sem wait and sem posts. 
um, same weight is going to check the semaphore's value. If the semaphore's value is uh, zero and it can no longer be decremented, then the semaphore, the, the thread itself is going to wait on that semaphore. Okay. If it's higher than zero, let's say five, then it's going to just decrement it and not wait, just start executing the next lines of code. Okay. And then same post sort of does the reverse. So instead of decrementing from five to four, let's say it increments it from four back to five once it's done uh, executing and doesn't wait or anything, it just increments it. This is the idea of semaphore. You have an integer and you either decrement that integer or increment it. And if it's at zero, you're going to have to wait on it. Now, let's take a look at our semaphore. So here on the left, we have the threads and below we have the semaphore's value. As I said in the beginning, we're starting with the uh, semaphore at one. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so let's suppose that one of the threads, let's say thread zero, uh, calls same weight. So thread zero calls same weight. I'm going to denote that with an arrow down for decrementing, right? The weight operation might also be denoted with P of S. Uh, that's also another way to uh, say weight at that semaphore. And well, the first thread, thread zero, is going to decrement this value from one to zero. Now, all the other three threads are going to also call same weight because they are multi-threaded, they're all working at the same time. Uh, now, because the semaphore is at zero, we're not going to get anything. So it's just going to wait until semaphore is some number that's higher than zero. All right, that's going to wait. And that thread zero is going to actually what? It's going to sleep for one second. After one second, it's going to print it on the screen like we saw uh, on the, like we saw there. And it's also going to increment the value once it hits same post. So now the value of the semaphore is one and it's going to finish its execution. It's going to free the arguments and finish execution and we're done with that thread. We only have three threads now. Now all three threads are waiting on the same weight, but only one is going to be able to actually execute again. So one is going to start executing. It's going to decrement semaphore again from one to zero and it's going to have to make the other threads continue waiting. Okay. So that one thread, let's say, it's, let's say it's thread one, but it could be any thread really. Let's say it's thread one for this example. It's going to sleep for one second. It's going to print it on the screen and it's going to increment the uh, semaphore's value again, back to one. Okay. And then the same thing for the thread two, it's just going to uh, decrement it again, sleep, print, and then of course, uh, increment it. And then for the last thread is going to decrement the semaphore, uh, sleep print, and then of course, increment it. And at that point we are done. Now, the most important thing to note here is that between uh, a wait and a post, that's what it's, that's what is the critical section that we're trying to execute. And you might notice that in this setup, at every point, all the code between a, a wait and a post is executed by just one thread. This is why we actually got a message every second, right? because one second it would be the first thread and the second thread, the second second and so on and so forth. So this sort of acts like a mutex, okay? but. There's a key difference here and I'm going to go back to the code here and instead of having it initialized to one, we can change this to a two. If we change this to a two and launch this, you're going to see a very big difference in that. Well, now two of the threads start running and then the other two start running again next second. Why is that? Well, now because the value is two, if we take a look at the table again, uh, so the initial value of the semaphore is two. That means that, well, let's say thread zero hits same weight and it says, okay, well, the semaphore is two, we can decrement it. So it's going to uh, decrement it. But then let's say thread one sees that also the semaphore is uh, not zero. It's actually one still. So it can also decrement it. So both of them actually decrement or wait past the same weight call, which make them actually print something on the screen at the same time after waiting one second. And then once they're done, they both increment this value. So 
one thread is going to increment it from 0 to 1 and the other one is going to increment it from 1 to 2. And then because uh, after that only two threads are left executing, of course both of them are going to be able to execute the same code at the same time because the semaphore's value is 2, it's not just 1. So both of them are going to be able to wait or to pass the same wait call at the same exact time. So this is why we're getting this behavior. And of course, if I change this to, let's say, a three, a three, we're gonna see that three threads start executing at the same time. And then lastly, just one thread is gonna finish execution. And you can do this with four if you want, and then you're gonna have all the threads um, executing at the same time, and that's gonna be that. So this is what semaphores are, just basically uh, sort of a mutex with a counter on it. But the main difference between it and that recursive mutex that we looked at is that you can actually have it lock multiple times, but between multiple threads, right? So we had two of the threads actually same weight, pass the same weight call at the same time, and then they actually called uh, same post also at the same time. Whereas with mutexes, you cannot have that. Even if we had recursive locks, you could only lock a mutex in one single thread. You could lock it twice in the same thread, but you cannot lock it twice on different threads. This is the very basic difference between semaphores and mutexes. And that's all we have for this video. I'm going to take a look at a couple practical examples regarding semaphores uh, in the next lessons, simply because I don't see much uh, of them around and it's very difficult to wrap your mind around why they are useful. Why do you want to wait on the same resource multiple times? So we're going to take a look at that in the next lessons. I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Again, the source code can be found on our website, link in the description below. Take care. Bye.